Shalom, the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you, the Lord honor you. Beloved, today I want to share with you some keys that will help you improve your prayer life. In fact, some of the keys I will share with you today is based on personal experience. You know, when I started um, my work with the Lord, especially my work of spiritual warfare, um, I was not as fervent as I am right now. I grew part-time. The Holy Spirit helped me and uh, I was able to grow to where I am now. And I'm, I keep on growing every day. And today I want to share with you some of the things that really helped me in this journey of intimacy with the Lord, especially at the altar of prayer. Number one in my list is that um, when I started this prayer work, I, I started by making sure I write down my prayer points. I write down, I take up time to write down my prayer points and to actually understand what I am praying about. You know, most of the times, one of the challenges that um, uh, new believers have is this challenge of uh, how do I pray? Where do I start from? This is how to start. You might not know how to quote scriptures. You might not know uh, this and that. This scripture said this. The other scripture said that. You know, as a new born again Christian, all you need to do is write down that thing that is your challenge, that thing that you want to pray about, and then uh, sit down and begin to think out what you actually want to ask God. To do for you about that situation that is what you just write down you know and one other thing that can actually help you to write down uh, accurately is uh, consulting some prayer books there are some books written by some great men and women of god that uh, when you go through them you can see some prayer points in it that can actually help you to actually pray fervently in relation to what your challenge is at that present time and these are some of the things I did at those initial time. So I always write down, if I happen to pick up like a prayer book, I will just uh, go through it, I will pick up some prayer point, I will write it down in my notes, and then if I am engaging in midnight prayers, I will just carry my notes, I will be reading it. As I am reading it, it will get to a point, I will just get ignited. In my spirit, I will just intensify. There are times that the Spirit of God will, will, will prompt me to pray that prayer, that particular prayer point for five minutes, like that. You know, so always learn to write down what you want to pray. Write down what you want to pray. And as you grow in the Lord, when you have a challenge, let's say, for instance, you are going through a health challenge and you want God to heal you. You know, one of the things that moves God at the altar of prayer is His Word. And this is one of the things that the devil fears most. So one other way you can actually improve your prayer life, whether you're a new believer or you have been in the faith for a very long time, is to practice praying the scriptures. Practice praying the scriptures. Pick up a particular scripture in the Bible that talks about your challenge. You can pick up like five scriptures, then scriptures, just use your phone, google it. Scriptures about healing, scriptures about this, scriptures about this. Whenever the answers comes up, go through the scriptures online and then when you're going through it online, always cross check it in the Bible. Pick up your Bible and cross check it and then stand on those scriptures, remind God of his promises, pray those scriptures. Pray those scriptures. And I'm telling you, when you pray those scriptures, God is bound to do his word. He's bound to do his word. This is one way that actually helps you get results faster. When you remind God of his word, you always require that we come with our strong reasons. You come with your strong So scriptures are very strong reasons why God must answer you. And in search of your word, you can actually look for case studies in the Bible where God did the same thing and remind God of it. And say, God, if you can do it for this person, I believe you can also do it for me. 
So stand on scriptural uh, ground, pray with scriptures. It will help you improve your prayer life. Okay? And um, another advice I also want to give to you is this. Don't um, go into praying long prayers at the initial time, especially if you have not been a consistent praying believer. Don't go into praying very long prayers and then in the course of the prayers, if you are doing midnight prayer, you start sleeping, you know. No! Very short prayer, but one thing I will tell you is learn to make it consistent. Be consistent. From there, you can actually improve from 15 minutes to 30 minutes to one hour to two hours. This is how to improve your prayer life and the length of your prayers and your time staying power at the presence of God. Don't just um, move into, ah, Sister Amaka is praying for two hours. I want to join her. Ah, she challenged me last time and said I cannot pray for two hours. What will you be doing in the presence of God for two hours when you don't even have anything to pray about? <laughs> you don't even know what to pray. And some of you will just be there and be doing like, say you are praying, you are praying in tongues. You will just be shaking your head and you are not praying. You know you are just dozing off. So it is not, God does not answer prayers based on how long it is. No, God answers prayers. Number one, based on the faith level of the believer. I have thoughts on this. Just go and check uh, uh, some of the uh, videos of thoughts of prayers. It's going to actually help you. God doesn't answer prayer based on how long it is. No. How long was the prayer of the woman with an issue of blood? She said in her heart, I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And she just took a step of it and she got her healing. Was it a one hour prayer? No. No. So, it, it, it's not about how long, but how consistent you are until you get what you are asking God for. How persistent you are staying power at the presence of God. So wait until he brings forth your testimony is what matters most. So employ consistency and don't allow yourself to be carried away by or to feel I am not making impact. I am not actually prayerful by praying five minutes, by praying ten minutes. No, no. There are so many things that empower prayer. It's not about the length. It's not about the length. Your righteousness is part of them. Your faith is part of them. Your consistency is part of them. So, employ this is going to help you. Another thing that actually helped my prayer life was um, I joined congregational prayers. Congregational prayer. This is one of the ways to sharpen your prayer life. It's one of the ways. Join a group of people that are praying. You know, you, if you have lived in the village before, or you have lived in a house where you warm your house with a, a wood, charcoal, you know, stops. When you get a cold charcoal, if you pick up a cold charcoal, for instance, and uh, you want to actually ignite a light, and the other part of the charcoal is warm, normally the first charcoal that will get ignited is the one that is warm, right? Then, before the cold one will not dry up, the water on it will not dry up before it can be able to, it can be able to actually catch the fire. That is how it is when you join congregational prayers. Yes, you are, you are like that cold charcoal, full of water, full of things. You might go the first day, you will not feel the impact, but you are, the water in you is drying. The laziness in you is trying. The spirit of, of slumberness that the enemies has released on you, hindering you from being fervent, from being consistent, is leaving you. Before you know it, you get sharpened. You catch the fire of prayer. You catch the fire of prayer. That you can now stay and pray. Whether you are in fact, this is this is one of the ways to actually improve as a Christian. And that's why I tell people, if the church where you watch it is not a praying church, I don't know what you are doing there. Yeah. Jesus said my house should be called the house of prayer. If you are not praying in your church, what you do is to go and dance. What you do is to go and sit and dance. Your pastor will not even preach. You just go and, and sit down and be hearing prophecy, prophecy. Madam, find another place to worship. Because the devil can prophesy. 
can prophesy. So locate a praying church. That is that is one of the the ways you can actually improve yourself. Sharpen yourself and improve yourself. Okay? So this is one of it. And uh, lastly, I want to encourage you to learn to pray with the Holy Spirit. Learn to pray with the Holy Spirit. You know, um, this is one of the ways that uh, many of us have not actually learned when it comes to prayer. Uh, I've come to observe that most Christians, what we do in the presence of God is to just come up and we shout, Oh God, my Father, Father, do this for me. Father, do that for me. Father, do that for me. Father, do that for me. But when we finish praying, we say, Oh, thank you, Father. We we'll walk away. No. No. No, it's not supposed to be so. That is not how it's supposed to be. Then where is the place of meditation? In that of prayer. Where is the place of meditation? Where is the place of hearing God speak to you? You have come to present your strong reasons. You need to wait to hear answers. And that is where you involve the Holy Spirit. God seeked men and women that will seek Him this way, that will pray this way. I will be sharing with you in my next video how to actually do this. How to actually communicate with the Holy Spirit at the altar of prayer. And I believe this will actually help your prayer life. So get ready for the next video. I will be sharing with you on that video how to pray and communicate with the Holy Spirit at the altar of prayer. Get ready for that video. It's going to bless your life. I believe with these few keys, your prayer life will actually be improved. God Almighty bless you. I still remain your sister, Apostle Amaka. In case today is your first time of coming across our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to please consider subscribing. Consider subscribing and be a part of this family. Believe you me, you will never regret ever doing so. I assure you of that. And for every one of you that are returning subscribers, I celebrate every one of you. God Almighty bless you. Do have a lovely day. Bye for now.